Hey guys, uh, I'm Kane. Uh, some of you guys requested uh, a lightsaber throw tutorial for the VFX uh, from Adverse, so if we just skim through here. Uh, essentially, you guys are after this shot here. Uh, for the most part, the shot isn't actually all that complicated, like this effect. Uh, there's a full sequence for you as well. But yeah, for the most part, this isn't too complicated. It is pretty straightforward. There's a few ways of going about it. Um, but the exact method I know, so I'm going to show you today, um, or at least as close as I can. Now, unfortunately, I don't have access to the original footage of this film. Um, I had an accidental backup failure uh, a few months back, and I accidentally lost, well, about 90 of this film, which is pretty unfortunate. But um, anyway, I, so I just reshot this part with some of my friends in the backyard. Uh, so. The one I'm going to be walking you through exactly, if I can remember where I put it, is that one. Okay, sweet. Um, so essentially, the, I haven't done the blade for this, um, just there's no need, that's not what we're focusing on today. But So here's essentially the same thing we're going to recreate today, more or less. Uh, it's pretty rough around the edges, but it's just something I quickly whipped up for the sake of the tutorial. Um, you'll learn the techniques, and from there, just you know, make it in your own way. But, so essentially it's just, just that there. It's pretty straightforward, pretty bare bones um, in this exact case. But anyway, um, let's just get on with it. Um, first up, um, here we have our footage. I'm actually going to drop this to half to make this go a bit quicker. Um, so essentially, um, the way this works is in this shot here, you have your actor pretend to throw the saber, um, and then have your other guy... Just play around with the timing and choreography, but have them throw it, your other guy will deflect, or at least pretend to, pretend to catch it again about there, and then go in for your attack. Um, first shot, practical, so he pulls back, pretends to throw, cut to the shot where he pretends to throw it, he's got nothing, catches, attacks, and then an adverse case over here, um, we just cut into a different shot there. Just makes it more dynamic, but essentially... Once you have this, these two shots, uh, we want to take this and just render out a JPEG or PNG sequence of just this. Um, I've already done that, so I uh, just save the hassle. Um, then we jump into Cinema 4D. Um, essentially, what you want to do is step one. Um, if this isn't showing, by the way, um, Control D brings up your frame rate. Make sure that matches the same as your footage. Just saves any headaches in the future. Um, then we go to the motion tracker. Now we're not actually going to track it, I just do it this way because it makes life a lot easier as far as getting the exact matching to the actual live action plate. Um, take your image sequence, just here, bring that in. After samples, that's not samples, uh, that one's samples. Um, and essentially that's it there, just give that a wee run through, let it do its thing. Um, you could even just bring this in as a background plate if you would like, or just whatever way you want, but I just find the motion tracker is easy, gives us a camera to work with and everything there. Um, and essentially from this point, you just need to get a 3D model of a lightsaber. Um, in this case, I literally just quickly whipped this one up uh, just before making this film. Very, very rough around the edges, as you can see, but for the sake of the tutorial, it's fine. Essentially, um, you just want your blade and hilt separate. Um, for the sake of materials more than anything. Texture up your hilt, whatnot, make it look all realistic, up to you how you do that. Uh, on the blade, I'm using a red shift in this case, but you can use any renderer. Um, I just got an incandescent, I'm um, just there. Um, just leave that one there because we already have it. And if you just come over here, you can see we just basically crank this up to ensure it's pure white. Now, when it comes to coloring the blade, there's two ways you can do this. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I've done it a bit differently. Um, I added the glow in After Effects. Um, if you want to add the glow in the Cinema 4D, you can. Um, just means you have to render with motion blur on as well. Not a problem, but for the sake of this, I just took a slightly more simple approach. As, I don't know anything about you guys. You could use Cinema, you may not. Um, so just keep it simple for the sake, uh, mostly in After Effects. But yeah, essentially, make grab this. Um, Axi position is up to you. I just made sure it's around the, the hilt, approximately, just where the handle did go. Just gives us a nicer spin. Um, essentially, we want to then take that, throw it into our 
do comp here. So just copy that, chuck it in. There we go. Uh, scale it down a bit um, and just sort of throw it back in space. Uh, the, again, since we're not really motion tracking the shot exactly, it doesn't matter too much if it's the correct scale to camera or not as far as the depth is concerned. Um, but essentially, just uh, this is probably a wee bit big. It's a bit big in the rough on it anyway, but essentially just make sure this is about the same size. So there, it's about the same size. Chuck it in his hand. Um, if we reference the shot prior, it was sort of on a slight angle here. So just sort of try to match that angle roughly. It, it's up to you. Um, so about there, grab your lightsaber, add a keyframe. I turn on auto for this, makes my life a bit easier. And just come through frame by frame and just sort of roughly align it. I'm just doing this very rough for the sake of tutorial. The more time you spend, the better. But uh, essentially just line that up. About here would probably be the, where he throws it approximately. Have a few frames forward to the point where this is about where he hits it. Um, so it comes out, goes toward him. Uh, if you want to add some spin on it, sort of angle it a bit like that, you can. It's up to you, really. Um, just have a play around, do it if you want. Um, it's probably not the right path, but again, it's just a tutorial. It's close enough. At that point, bring it back, find the point where he catches it, which is about there. So we want to spin it back the other direction, have him catch it in his hand. And then again, we're just sort of just filling this in. So it bounces back catches and then again just follow his hand a bit more um i'm gonna stop that there because i already have one over here already pre-made um again pretty rough but it's there um all textured up and everything just there's the path yeah pretty straightforward um now the more time you spend here again the better but um i just get a hdri dome light it's a backyard you know sun grass so i just pumped in one from hdri haven uh that one there pretty similar to the current weather situation roughly so just threw that in there um and then yeah just uh again when you're gonna render make sure it matches your footage size the frame rate matches uh, make sure to check all frames um save it with the alpha channel in the straight alpha as a png 16 bit is helpful for more color info but 8 bit is okay um again just make sure your render settings are all good you're happy with them all that send it off to render and that's pretty much that done um if you did want to do the glow in the software as well um on the camera uh essentially you just go to redshift camera uh and here you want to go to bokeh uh, not bokeh sorry uh bloom turn that on default's fine it's literally pure white it'll it'll work this will give you the nice glow in cinema 40 for motion blur as well if you want to throw that on redshift it's just literally check that button it'll do the job but anyway, there's that done, and it's pretty much done at this point. As I said, it's pretty straightforward um, for the tutorial comp. Here we go. Let's run through here. There's our plate. Essentially, um, I've already got it here, but just import in your sequence. Uh, make sure to interpret that to the correct frame rate. Bring it on in, drop it in, and essentially just play that back. And as rough as it is, there's your um, base effect pretty much done um yeah that's pretty much it um obviously to make this look cleaner and is uh, a lot more precise like this one here just just play around with your actors try and get the timing right may take a few takes but yeah the better the timing on the saber is ultimately depending on the actors you kind of have to work around them the way i done it um, but that's pretty much it. Um, at this point, you want to just throw in some rough compositing on here. So throw a fast box bar on. Probably throw that to uh, point 0.2. Close enough. Uh, curves. Uh, this is uh, from Video Copilot, by the way, FX console. If you're wanting to use that, just sort of roughly dial this in. It's pretty rough chrome texture, but as I said, just quickly threw something together for this tutorial. Um, so that's pretty much there. Um, that's that done. Uh, throw your motion blur on. Uh, you can throw a motion blur on before or after um, for the glow. It's up to you, really. Um, I prefer to put it on before, but it's up to you. Um, 80 roughly matches what I shot on. I shot on 50, uh, 150 for my shutter speed, so 80 gives a nice similar result for a lightsaber. Um, pre comp that because pixel motion blur is a pain in the butt when it comes to just comps and stuff. Um, so I just put this lightsaber. Um, like that. Uh, here you want to 
duplicate this on this one, use the extract effect. Now some of you guys may hate me for this method, but it works when a pinch in a pinch, so it's the method I chose for the tutorial. But again, you can do this any way you would like. If you want to render the blade differently to the hilt, you can do that too. This is just how I'm doing it. Um, so duplicate this, name it glow, turn your bottom one off, throw on oh, the extract effect, which we've already got up, and just bring this up until the hilt is deleted. Just soften it out a little bit. Pretty much just there. At this point, throw an optical glow. Just like that. And I'll crank this up rather high. A thousand. Yeah, we've got a thousand might as well. Maybe pump that up a bit more. Just then just to be safe in case you get some of the hilt in there, just over the highlights only up to something like 25. Exact settings will vary depending on your shot and whatnot. Save it to be safe. And then throw on VC Color Vibrance from Video Copilot. It's free, definitely you should get it. Choose your color. I'm going to go with a nice sort of pinky color because, you know, pink's cool. You know, this is otherwise is wrong. That's just how it is. <laughs> Nothing else about it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, really, um, at that point. Then as well, what we may do, just turn the glow off, speed this up. Just grab your pen tool, come in here, just throw a... Obviously, if this is an actual film, be quite precise. I'm just doing it roughly uh, for the sake of tutorial. Um, yeah, pretty much just mask path. Follow this around on a subtract, and you get the idea. It's essentially just rotoscoping out the hand. Um, already done it, so jump over to this comp over here. It's a pretty straightforward effect for the most part. For the saber throw itself, just Cinema 4D, grab your saber, throw it in there. Follow along frame by frame. Don't know what happened there, ignore that. <laughs> uh, just follow along frame by frame, follow the path and animate it along. Don't need to worry about tracking the footage, it's moving anyway. Render it out with an alpha channel. Bring it in, use an extract effect to remove the hilt, optical glow to make glow on the blade, add some motion blur, composite it a bit, and that's pretty much the effect. It'll look something like this. Apologies for talking fast, by the way, I am just naturally a pretty fast talker, and when it gets about technical stuff in VFX, I just speed up even more. <laughs> so yeah, apologies on that. Once it's all done, you'll get something like this. Uh, if you don't have any lightsaber models or you don't know 3D modeling, um, Turbo Squid, you can find some free ones on there. That's pretty much it, done and dusted. So um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope the tutorial was what you're after and explained all the blanks. And um, yeah, if there's any other tutorials you would like me to do or cover, feel free to just you know, throw it in the comments. Um, they're never really intended on having a huge YouTube channel with tutorials and whatnot, but Hey, if a subscriber count starts growing and you guys are wanting them, I may as well make them, right? So yeah, I uh, just comment in the description if there's any other tutorials from my films that you want to see. Uh, if not, thanks for watching and have a good one.